Good morning. Hi, my name is Lindsay. Welcome to my quarter pass arts and crafts journal. So this is where I try and take about 15 minutes out of my day. Sometimes it's every few days. Excuse me. But I just want to find some time in my life to take some time to talk a little bit more about crafting and art and stuff than I already do. So and it's a way to journal, a way for me to document my life and my thoughts and that. So, yes. I will get right on with things that I have been making. So, starting off, let's just go with order of things. <laughs> so, this right here is some washed wool. It's a sheep's fleece. And this came off of a Gotland Romney Charlois, Charlois, I don't know how to pronounce it properly, but that's the type of sheep it is. And so this is classified as a long wool. It's got a decently long staple length. It's got a good sound. It's nice and strong. It's a good spring. I'm still developing my ear for a good fleece. So that's one of the ways that you test the integrity of the staple and of the yarn is to, if it makes a high, like a noise, I don't know if my computer will pick that up, <laughs> but like a kind of a higher pitch pinging makes a good, has a good sound to it. There's no sounds of any ripping or anything like that. So it's got a nice strong staple. And this, from my, my experiences of long wool, which haven't been hugely vast and I haven't been working with yarn for decades and decades or anything like that. But from the ones that I've tried out before, this is significantly softer. The hairs, the, like the fibers themselves are very fine. So it's beautiful and it's made some really stunning wool, which I'm going to just insert a picture of in here because it's not going to come up properly on the screen at all. You're not going to be able to see the the subtle sort of variegation in this yarn because all I did with this was wash it and I washed it with something that I will not wash with again so I have to try that again next time but I used Orvis paste and I learned that that is made with an ingredient that is probably not the best for every the environment and for everybody involved so my mistake but nonetheless it's done the fleece has been washed the motto is gone so lesson learned but I'm glad that my friend brought this up to me and shared the information with me too it did a heck of a job cleaning this fleece I used maybe a quarter of a teaspoon of it. I, I literally dipped a spoon in the jar, let it trickle off, and then I stuck it, stuck it in. So it was a very small amount of washing of the actual Orvis paste. But it, it managed to fill quite a large bucket of hot water. And I put the lock, I actually separated the locks lock by lock in the dirty fleece just so that I could line them up and then place them into the bags in sort of a way that had some consistency and everything was all lined up. And I tried experimenting with putting just the whole fleece in a bag and just plunking it in and seeing what would happen. And I found that it was a lot harder to organize the locks and get the locks separated after that. So I took the extra step and separated everything. And I like the way it turned out. So I've taken the locks, I just flick them open with a, it's a dog brush essentially, can be used for that, can also be used for opening up locks. And I spun straight from the locks, so I didn't blend the colors together at all. It's just, so it's going to create a bit more of a variegation in the yarn. It's not going to make it as heathered, I think, as it would be if I blurred it all together. So. I wanted to basically see what I could find to be the most 
straightforward way of getting the fleece, process, washing it, processing it, and spinning it into yarn so that it could be made into a garment. So this was the most low intensive, low, I didn't need to have any sort of special equipment or anything like that. This was low cost. But I'm going to need to try and switch up my detergent next time. That's something I'm going to do. So, but I got 556 yards of, this is 142 grams, and it is about a light fingering weight, I would say, to a fingering weight. And I haven't washed it yet, so I'm excited to see what will happen after it's washed. So this is, that's really my first, I can't stop. This is my first skein that I've done, that I've um, taken this time to hand process completely a fleece. And so it's very, it's been very, very rewarding to go through this process and to wash everything in the summertime and then spend the fall carding out um, or flicking out all the the locks and get them ready for spinning and now actually spinning it and plying it and seeing what the yarn is now actually looking like right from the very beginning after I did my first wash of the a batch of wool and after it had dried I made myself a little sample a little knit up sample just so that I could keep myself motivated just so I knew what sort of item was coming because it's a big it was a six and a half pound fleece. It's a big project. It's a lot of the same stuff, but I find that just dreaming about the project and the, the next stages and stuff, it helps, you know, the, long, the parts that take a little bit longer not feel monotonous at all. And yeah, so great. Such a beautiful dark brown. I just, yeah. Okay. Next thing. So I am trying to keep it as handmade or thrifted at Christmas this year, even down to the dogs in the house. So I know this might seem a little extravagant for an animal to make them a handmade toy, but I did it and I think it's adorable and cute and I know he'll probably rip its head off in no time flat, but I don't really care. Yeah. This is, I don't know, I haven't given it a name yet. For, for some reason, it remi at first I was going for a snowman, and now it reminds, things, makes me think of a little bird, like a little morning dove or a pigeon or something. But this is one, there's two dogs. I might even try making my dog, Harley, one of these. I'm not sure if he'll be into that. He's, he's got preferences for a particular rabbit and squirrel. But... I just, I whipped this up in an evening. I just freeform hand cut out the, the little circly guy on the hat and then just hand stitched it. I just did some back stitching all along it. And then I stuffed it with some of the leftovers of when I was flicking open these locks, there would be some discarded stuff, some extra jumbly stuff. And I don't have a drum carter. To put that through to use it I could try and cart it and make roll eggs and stuff but I'm also good with using it for little stuffed things and then I stitched a little I knit a little scarf out of some linen and then I just I stitched everything down quite firmly and then just stitched on a little face so you know yeah he's probably gonna rip the head off or rip the hat off and destroy it in no time flat but I don't it, that's fine. That's what dogs like to do with their toys, you know. I've, I've, you know, they don't go around trying to tell me how to play with my stuff. So, yeah, that's fine with me, to be quite frank. So I've already come up with an idea for the second dog, <laughs> where I'm going to use some of the same materials, and I'm going to make her a little mouse. That's going to have a jute tail jute rope tail on the end of it and I'm gonna use some more probably some more of the cotton or I might use some wool felt use some more of this and uh, yeah <laughs> my husband's looking at me and he's like you know that's, that's a little extreme don't you think 
That's like one really spoiled dog to be getting a handmade dog toy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm doing it anyway. I like making little things like this. I really like it. I enjoy it. All right, so something that's not craft related, but is related to very much packing crafts around. <laughs> So I take a lot of craft supplies to and from my work. And I have been using an old nylon backpack. That was my grandpa's. And it is falling apart. And it is not waterproof at all. So I have to wrap up the contents of the things in my backpack with, I usually use my shawls. I have a bunch of wool shawls, so I just kind of wrap everything else <laughs> or I pack things in, in canvas bags. So I've been on the hunt just looking at, we have an app here where I live that helps you find things secondhand. And I had been looking, wanting to try and find a waterproof backpack that I could take biking with me and to and from work and stuff. And I found something kind of cool. I found a backpack that is made out of recycled sail cloth. And it's made here in Vancouver by a company called Red Flag Designs. And it's a very simple design. It kind of sounds weird. It's got just like really interesting. The sail cloth is this interesting sort of material, sort of rubbery feeling material. So it's just one of those fold over backpacks that's got the straps like this. And I don't know what that is. It's just got adjustable straps. And yeah, it's waterproof. It's got little zippers right at the top for, you know, essentials like phone and whatever. And I paid a ridiculously low price for this. If I had tried to buy this brand new, I would not have been able to afford it. And, um, you know, that's not, man, it's, it's hard for me because it's like, I want to support companies like that. I want to support people who are using recycled materials in my hometown my in my home city but you know I I have I am where I am with my finances and trying to set priorities on things and trying to do without as much as possible and secondhand it offers me a way to give new life to stuff that people don't find use for anymore and I can still wear the product and speak gladly about it and tell people that it's a great item and that they should go shop there and get one for themselves if they can or try and find a friend who's not using theirs anymore. <laughs> but I was so, I was just so happy to find this and I had just been saying to myself like I really need to find a better solution here and not just be getting my stuff soaking wet every time I go to work. And uh, I kind of put it out there to the secondhand thrift store gods. Just, I need a back. I need a waterproof backpack, please. And here it is. Yeah. So, and it's one of those ones that because it's a fold over, you can hardly fill it up all the way, all the way to the top and still have it close. The one thing about this design is that it doesn't have a a hook that comes down. You can attach anywhere down here to like make the this little part not flip up. That's the only thing I would change about this, is that I would put a little hook or something that you could attach at different points so that this part just completely stays close to the body of the back. Just personal preference. Anyway, I'm excited. So, I used up 15 minutes. Woohoo! There we go! let you get on with your day. I hope that you have a good one and I'll talk to you later. Bye.